Hi, this is Mrs. Carnes, and this video is going to be talking about properties of parallel lines. Now, we just got done in the last video. We talked about um, what what the picture was looking like when you had a transversal that was cutting two lines. Now, we never talked about those two lines being parallel. It was just any line that intersects two other lines became a transversal. And so we kind of talked that there was these eight angles that were formed when that happened. Well, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to assume that the two lines that the transversal is cutting, we're going to assume that they are parallel. So we're going to be looking at examples like the second picture here. We're going to be knowing that our lines are going to be parallel, and we're going to see some interesting things happen with these eight angles. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is what's called the corresponding angle postulate. Now, this postulate states, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. Now, let's take a look at this if-then statement in this postulate, because this is going to help prepare us for the rest of the um, theorems that are to come. Now, it says, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines. That's the if part of the statement. So we know that we have to be looking at parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Then, if that happens, then we know that we have the corresponding angles that are congruent. Now, we saw in the last video, we know that the corresponding angles in this picture would be angle 2 corresponds with angle 5, angle 3 and angle 8 are corresponding, angle 1 and angle 6 are corresponding, and angle 4 and angle 7 are corresponding. And we know that because they are in similar positions in reference to the transversal and the two lines. Now, when I look at this picture, I automatically know that line A and B are parallel because of those two symbols right there. So we know that the first part of this if statement is being held true. We have a transversal, and it is being it is intersecting two parallel lines. Since that is true, then we can go on to say that all pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So in this case, we could say angle 2 is congruent to angle 5. And we know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 8. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 6. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 7 because those are the corresponding angles and they are congruent because we had a transversal that was intersecting two parallel lines. So let's take a look at a ne the next theorem that follows. Now the next theorem is called the alternate interior angles theorem and it states if a transversal intersects two parallel lines then alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, if we notice, that if statement is the exact same statement as it was when we talked about the corresponding angle postulate. So we still have to have this picture to be able to, con uh, to look at anything else. We know that we have a transversal, and it is intersecting two parallel lines. So since that's true, we can then continue on with the then part. Then alternate interior angles are congruent. So as soon as we find a pair of alternate interior angles, like angle 3 and angle 6, we can say that those are congruent to each other. We also can say angle 4 is congruent to angle 5 because that is the other pair of alternate interior angles. And so because again, since the lines were already parallel and the transversal was cutting them, then we know that they were congruent. If we didn't know that the lines were parallel, we would just say that they were alternate interior angles. We wouldn't be able to say anything about their angle measures being congruent. The next theorem is the same side interior angles theorem. It states if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we see that same if, if statement again. So we know again we have that transversal and there's their parallel lines. So since it's true, we can then say the then part is also true. So it says then same side interior angles are supplementary. Now this time we're talking about same side interior, so we'll find those pairs of angles. They're not going to be congruent this time, they're telling us that they're going to be supplementary. So we would look at the same side interior angles like angle 3 and angle 5. And we would say that angle 3 and angle 5 are supplementary. Now we might not want to write it out 
in a sentence format, we also could say the exact same thing would be to say that angle 3 plus angle 5 must add up to equal 180 degrees because that's what supplementary means, that those two angles must add up to be 180 degrees. We also could grab the other pair of same side interior angles, which would be angle 4 and angle 6, and we could say angle 4 plus angle 6 must equal 180 degrees when you add their measures up. So that's the same side interior angle theorem. Now the next one is alternate exterior angle theorem. So this time we're talking about the alternate exteriors. We're going to continue to can go through this a little bit quicker because it starts off the same way again. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, which we know it does, transversal parallel lines, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Notice how we go back to them showing to be congruent again. So the alternate exterior angles in this picture would be angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 7 and angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 8. And those are our alternate exterior angles. We know they're congruent because that transversal intersects those parallel lines. And the last theorem that we're going to look at is what we call the same side exterior angle theorem. Now it's going to look very similar to the same side interior angle theorem. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side exterior angles are supplementary. So again, we would be able to say that yes, this is a transversal and it is intersecting parallel lines. Therefore, we know that the same side exterior angles like angle 2 and angle 8 are supplementary. And again, we don't have to write it out in a sentence format. We could say angle 2 plus angle 8 must add up to be 180 degrees. And we could say, again, that angle 1 plus angle 7 would have to add up to equal 180 degrees. So what you want to make sure you realize is that the same side, exterior and interior angles, would be supplementary, and the alternate interior and exterior angles would be congruent. And then that's the difference between these. So all of these theorems only work if those lines are parallel. So the postulate and the theorems that we just looked at, remember they're only working for parallel lines cut by a transversal. If we don't know that the lines are parallel, like here, we don't have any evidence that line A and line B are parallel, then we can't say anything about these pairs of angles. We can still say that, they, that angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding angles, or we could say that angle 3 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles, but we can't say anything about their measurements unless the lines are already known to be parallel. So go ahead and take a look at these and see if you can see the difference between knowing if the lines are parallel already and when you don't have any evidence that the lines are parallel.